Hey, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be continuing through our journey into Unknown Pleasures by Joy Division. And um, yeah, the next song is called She's Lost Control. If you are uh, just joining us for the first time, uh, my name is Daniel. And uh, we're going, we've been going through the album in order, so you should probably go to the first video if you want. Uh, but if not, hi, welcome, and thank you for joining me. Let's just jump right into it. Uh, yeah, here we go. Three, two, one, she's lost control. So many unique drum choices on this record. I love how they move back and forth too. Confusion and arises says it all. She's lost control. Notice how the guitar is slowly expanding in its uh, in its volume. I suppose uh, it's getting more and more aggressive, and uh, yeah, it was cool when the when the guitar came in and like the back. Um, I don't know what they're running it through. Like, it sounds very um, uh, blown out, like overblown, but also like they turned it down a lot as well. Um, and are slowly building it up and slowly expanding it throughout, you know, the mix. Uh, it's, it works really well and adds so much intensity and uh, strength to this track, which has been kind of frenetic, too. Like, the drums make it very... I feel like it's all over the place. Let's keep going. Again. We're losing control, if you will. She's lost control. She's lost control again. right there it's really interesting how they use the bass I phone a friend to stay my case and say she's lost control again and she showed up all the errors and mistakes and said I've lost control again and she expressed herself in many different ways until she lost control again and walked up on the edge of no escape Control. She's lost control again. She's lost control again. 
God dang it. Wanted to keep going. All right. Uh, that was... She's lost control. Let's take a look at the lyrics really quick. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're having an awesome day. Released as both an album cut and a hint of where New Order would eventually find itself, She's Lost Control drew inspiration from Ian Curtis's encounter with an epilepsy victim and her attendant lack of control over her own body. It was something Curtis also suffered from, and the chilling sense of desperation and fear shot through the lyrics draws on more than a dramatic grift. The deep echoes on the album version of his vocals make that version more of a disturbing listen, but on both the music is excellent. The steady death disco punch of the arrangement is as much a harbinger for early 80s experiments all over the world as anything. Peter Hook's memorable, softly descending bass line gets a rougher counterpart with Bernard Sumner's clipped, chugging riff and the whole... Sounds like a disturbing vision into a world many would never know otherwise. Hmm. There's also an official live recording of this track. Done in 1979. Dang, this was ahead of its time. Aerosol was used to create some of the drum effects. Wow, that's crazy. Um, oh, there's two separate recordings. Interesting. I have... No idea which version I just listened to. Hmm. wonder if the comments help. The pst sound is an aerosol can. The live performances of Transmission and She's Lost Control are better than the studio ones. Interesting. One good thing about the gothic rock is the constant free flow of sonics. You won't run astray after all. Gothic rock? Maybe that's what I like about it. That 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 darkness to it is really cool. Anyway, confusion in her eyes that says it all. She's lost control. She's clinging to the nearest passerby. She's lost control. And she gave away the secrets of her past and said, I've lost control again. In a voice that told her when and where to act, she said, I've lost control again. So he starts by introducing us to this character. It's, or this person. It's about a girl he knew while working for the Department of Disabled Services in Manchester. She had a seizure and died from it. This is, this is reported by Deborah Curtis on the 2007 Joy Division documentary. Ian had not been diagnosed with epilepsy himself at this point. She's a multifaceted person, like other individuals with many different interests and hobbies, but since she's epileptic, she ends up being defined by her epilepsy. She has to rely on other people for help, and she's clinging to the nearest passerby rather than being able to be independent like she wants to be. She gives away the secrets of her past. During some seizures, if you manage to maintain consciousness, which is rare in itself, it feels as if you are forced to act on something you don't want to do, as if you are a puppet to your maker. That's terrifying, actually. That is, that is really scary. Um, yeah. Like, um, I can't even imagine... Um, like, I, I know that, uh, when performing in the past, I've felt something that feels like almost tunnel vision at times, or like hyperventilation, almost, yeah, I don't even know what to call it, you know, and that's the closest thing, like, you, where you're not, like, in complete control of your own, uh, body, um, but that's not the same at all. And then, yeah, that's really scary. It's crazy. Um, and he's doing a great job. I mean, obviously he suffered from it as well, but he's doing a really good job of like describing it in a visceral way that I've, that's like, ah, hitting me really hard. She turned around and took me by the hand and said, I've lost control again. And how I'll never know just why or understand I've lost control again. She screamed out, kicking on her side, and said, I've lost control again, and seized up on the floor. I thought she'd die. She said, I've lost control. She's lost control is about epilepsy. But you have to take a step back and look at the larger theme of it all. Losing control in general, whether it's yourself or another, whether it's through epilepsy or drugs or panic attacks, seeing someone completely lose control of themselves is one of the most terrifying things ever. How can you help this person? Besides staying by their side and protecting them, the only thing that can really be done is to wait for their control to slowly return. That, in turn, betrays our own lack of control. And for that matter, how close are any of us to a complete loss of control? There, but for the grace of God, go I as the expression goes. Then the instrumental bridge 
the insanity-inducing instrumental bridge. Well, I had to phone her friend to state my case and say she's lost control again. So then he brings himself into it when she says she turned around, took me by the hand. You see this, this person reaching out, you know, and it grabs onto you, right? I had to phone her friend to state my case, say she's lost control again. She showed up all the errors and mistakes and said I've lost control again, but she expressed herself in many different ways until she lost control again and walked upon the edge of no escape and laughed. I've lost control. People with disabilities that affect or disrupt their everyday lives are often defined by what their condition is rather than who they are as a person, whether intentionally or subconsciously. This song was written about epilepsy, but the general statement applies to other things similar to it. Bipolar disorder, autism, social anxiety disorder, etc. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, this line seems metaphorical, talking about the toll that the perpetual loss of control takes upon your mental health and sense of self. Edge of no escape is death. The part when she laughed could mean two things. She finds her loss of control funny. After a lot of times where she'd already lost control in the past, it's almost normal to her. Or she knew she, her death was coming and she couldn't react to it normally because she has no control on herself. That's a great image right there. Damn. Yeah, man. Then a chorus again. Or powerful, visceral, gut punch of a song. All right. That's Joy Division. Joy Division's She's Lost Control. The next song is Shadow Play. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, before you go, if you want to stick around for a second, um, I'm actually releasing my own music pretty soon. I'm really, uh, really excited to share it with you guys. Um, and it was really fun to make. So at the end of the day, that's that's what's most important. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, full album is going to be released on Bandcamp on April 1st. And that's the actual date. That's not a joke. But if you want to, you know, check out what it, you know, some general sounds from it, there are two songs that have been released with uh, music videos. I made all of it in or almost all of it in this room right here. Um, and then the music videos, me and um, my family shot. I think I had my mom and my sister help with some of the camera stuff. And I edited it and did all the stuff for it. And uh, yeah, so one song is called Just Kidding, and the other one's called Distorted Waves. And they're both under the name Daniel Profeta here on YouTube. Um, if you do check it out, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And stay tuned for more Joy Division. Stay tuned for more videos. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you soon. Deathstroke 9, out.